Black and brown communities throughout Wisconsin are currently experiencing compounded forms of systemic racism. Due to COVID, due to the murder and attempted murder of black and brown people, specifically Jacob Blake, and then fearing for their lives when they're exercising their protest rights, they also live in fear of being involved or being pulled back into a criminal legal system. And so that's where my work comes in. My name is Emma Shakeshaft, and I work at the ACLU of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. I'm inspired to do this work, to get out of bed every day, and to fight for our clients. In New York City, Black and Latino folks experience policing differently than white people. Our clients are over-policed and experience police brutality at astronomically higher rates. We have this horrible pattern of NYPD officers engaging in collars for dollars. It's where they make arrests to pad their overtime. When this police misconduct is brushed under the rug and shielded from public disclosure by laws like 50A, we're not able to address the issue. I believe the right to vote is critical because I believe it's preservative of all of our other rights. In the South, blacks face racial injustice on a daily basis. Voters are having to stand in long lines for seven, eight hours. The research will show those are in the black communities. Lesser known voter suppression tactics are the use of fines and fees to keep people on probation or parole, to whereas they lose their right to vote. If we don't have the right to vote, then we don't have equal access to health care. We don't have equal access to jobs, and we don't have equal access to a variety of other rights. My focus is primarily on tickets like traffic tickets, very low level municipal ordinance violations. But for people who can't pay them, they very much could end up with severe consequences. Before the fellowship began, we knew that about 20 to 50 people a day in Milwaukee County were currently in jail for failure to pay a municipal court sanction. 3,937 people. Those who are, who are unable to pay may then suffer consequences like driver's license suspensions and even jail time. In the suburbs, 90% of people who were sentenced to jail time for failure to pay were Black or African American. Through advocacy, those numbers have dropped dramatically. Police Secrecy Law 50A was one of the worst laws in the entire country for shielding police misconduct records. We've seen the issue of police secrecy play out when families of those who've been killed by the NYPD haven't been able to access, in some cases, even the names of the officers who killed their family members. The mother of Eric Garner tried for years to get the record of the officer who killed her son. When it's all hidden and kept in the dark, we can't make the changes that we need to. Had the public had access to this information and had we been able to hold officers accountable, perhaps lives could be saved. My grandmother was a domestic worker. She was right in the heart of all the civil rights actions in Greensboro. We have the Greensboro Four with the sit-in movement, you know, John Lewis and Bloody Sunday. She was there for all of it. And that was really uh, what inspired me to, to go into voting rights work is going to ANT and just hearing the history uh, of my ancestors and the people that fought for the right to vote. There are people right now that are sitting in jail because they voted. What we see time and time again is that uh, black voters, they refuse to cast a ballot, especially if they have a felony record, because they're not sure if they'll be prosecuted for voting while they're ineligible. One of our former clients said that not only is he never going to vote again, but he's going to tell his children to never vote again. So what we see is a generational disenfranchisement. It's diminishing his voice, and his voice needs to be heard the loudest. I am surrounded by a movement where we're all just as passionate about changing the way policing is done in our city. And I just love every minute of it, getting to work with movement partners and seeing the results of some of our work really pay off. And it's just wonderful to really feel that my work is part of this movement. This work is incredibly personal to me, which is why I've dedicated my career to it. I want this world to be the best place it can be for myself, for my community. This work is, is just one small thing that I can do to help to make that happen. 
helping protesters, upholding racial justice, working to dismantle systems of racial inequity is incredibly crucial in this moment.